having. And particularly as I know people have got to go to parties, come from parties, generally are very busy and probably like me, completely exhausted. But thank you all for coming. Now Peter and Angus said to me, you are not allowed to get emotional. We're going to do just a little bit at the very beginning. And, and I just firstly wanted to say thank you all for supporting the club. When we launched it a year ago and we had, who came to our first ever Oyster Catchers Club? What, okay, so we basically had the 20 people here that were there on that first day around the boardroom and we had Rory speaking for quite a lot of time, didn't we? Although not as long as the other day when I was at a marketing society event in Scotland where he talked for 52 minutes. It was perfect and she was very good. Um, but we have come such a long way and it was a, it was a kind of small idea about our, of ours to try and get clients and agencies together in a really exciting, stimulating environment. And I have to say, we're really surprised at how successful it's been. Um, and I was, on Sunday night, I was at the Jingle Bell Ball, thank you, Giles. And I was talking to Carolyn McCall and she called me over and she said, come and have a drink with me. I just want to ask you about that club thing you've got going on because I keep hearing about it. Um, tell me what you're doing and can I come along? I said, yeah, you can come whenever you like. And then I um, was chatting to Catherine Kehoe, uh, who you know has spoken here and also has been a judge. And, and she introduced me to her husband. And she said, this is Suki, who runs the club I've been talking about. Um, it's one of the highlights of my year. I love doing it. Please, can I carry on being a judge? And her husband sort of nodded, going, oh, yes, yes, you have gone on about it quite a lot. Um, next year, however, we are going to try and make it even better. Um, it's not going to be bigger because the, the number of agencies that we're inviting is, is going to be capped, as you all know. We're not going to have any more. It's about you know, keeping the absolute best in the industry. We're going to keep trying to get as many clients as long as we can. We're going to work really hard on getting the best speakers, the most innovating, innovative and exciting topics for us all to share and uh, inspire our curious minds, which we talk about. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes talking about some of the highlights of our year before we get into the awards. Um, and you know, you know my love of the Olympics. I promise it's the last time I'm going to talk about it. But it has been so exciting, hasn't it? Um, and we have had our fair share of speakers talking about the Olympics. We had Abby talking from British Airways about her story. And, and we started our year with Abby running um, the, the digital and technology pitch which was about managing the customer experience right from the moment that a customer Googles the airline to buying a ticket to the full airport and in-flight experience. And um, Abby did a really great job of inspiring the agencies uh, to, to kind of feel passionate about it and to try and think about the business not just from the money that they might get by winning, but from everything else that involved. And for us, that's what one of the things we love to see um, and I, Angus said to me, I had to say it was his best pitch of the year. So if any of you have worked with Angus for and any other pitches, he probably doesn't completely mean it, but it is what he says. Um, we had other Olympic speakers. We had the Lloyds Bank story. Um, and we had the very lovely Chris McLeod talking last time about the TFL story. Um, delighting my mum. I have now played the video to her several times. She's very excited about the whole TFL thing. Um, and it, and it did lead to some wonderful memories from the summer um, celebrations. But as well as admiring the success of many of our GB athletes, hello, sit down. It's good that you can really embarrass people. It's good. Um, I've also been talking some, to some other high achievers. You've, you've probably heard me talk a little bit about um, the CEOs that I've been interviewing on behalf of the Marketing Society and working with Accenture on looking at what all their characteristics are and what skill sets they've got to, to be able to embrace business both now and in the future. Um, we are finally going to be able to launch the research um, at the Shard in February. And um, for those of you that are afraid of heights, a few people said, oh, I don't think I can come to the Shard because I'm a bit scared. It is amazing. So it is worth going all the way up there and coming along to and listen to their date. And the Marketing Society will announce when that's going to be. But we are going to take some of those findings. Um, and the Marketing Society said we can do that. And we'll have a particular event on it to share some of the inside track on it for the Oyster Catchers Club as well. Um, as you can imagine, I've interviewed about 45 chief execs, quite a lot of bravado, 
quite a lot of a little bit of self-deprecation from a few, more women mostly than men. Um, we asked them to score themselves out of five. So you can imagine there were quite a few that scored straight five out of five. Um, and even more that had six out of five for almost every skill attribute. Um, one of the chief execs that I interviewed was Jill McDonald. And you know that she's the CEO of McDonald's. Um, many of you might know, and Emily is here, that we evaluate um, and use the optimised process for um, McDonald's across a number of their partnerships. And whilst it was probably a slightly terrifying thing three years ago, I hope it's a little bit more helpful now. She has to say that. Um, <laughs> and Jill said, strategic thinking is about giving the whole company a sense of direction and clarity. Here is where we are going. This is why you're going there. And this is what it means to you. Um, and I was looking at that, and I thought, actually, that could have quite easily also have come from Phil Clark, who was the CEO of Tesco's. Um, and we did launch quite full on into the, one of the biggest pitches of the year. Um, and our brief was to find the best strategic and creative talent available to change the conversation for Tesco and to regain Britain's love and trust for the Tesco brand. Um, that's not an awful lot of pressure. And, uh, and also what we had was two chief execs, uh, an MD, quite a vocal MD, very vocal chief execs, two heads of marketing in the pitch. Um, and some of you were involved in that whole process, and it was pretty intimidating for you. But it was also a little bit like herding cats, where you had all these very senior guys, all in cars, all needing to do conference calls between the pitches, uh, all turning up and then marking what was going on, uh, and then having a point of view. And any of you that know the marketing director, David Wood, will also know that he, he needs to eat an awful lot of cake which we didn't quite know in the process. And so we had to make sure we had enough to eat. And he was going to come tonight, but actually it's then his birthday. So I spoke to him this morning. He said, I'm so sorry I can't come here because I've got to go and eat cake with my kids. Um, I'll come in January. Um, I also spoke to another chief exec, Ronan Dunn, and he said, a CEO needs fitness, resilience, and to have a lot of stamina. There's nowhere to hide, particularly from the market. You get knocked about regularly by the shareholders, press, and customers. You need to continue and not be waylaid. You can't be downhearted. You need vision and a purpose. And I think if you change a few of those words, um, that probably sums up what the year's been for us. There's nowhere to hide. Um, optimize, as we've said, is the name of our evaluation process. Um, and we were evaluating, um, we evaluate quite a lot of Sainsbury's agencies. Um, one in particular is the JV between Sainsbury's and Amir Nectar when it was re-signed about a year ago. Um, they then wanted to look at how they could actually have nowhere to hide in the future and make and co-create the way of working. So Helen Owen, John uh, and Mike Liebing looked at the skills to do a, a number of things. We ran six workshops, um, of which two of them was how to tell the KPI story in a lift. I thought it was quite an interesting one. And how to have courageous conversations. And I don't know how many of you have actually done a whole workshop on that, but we did that with Mike. And uh, I have to say, I'm a little bit braver than I was before. Um, we were talking about this in the office, and Claudia Collinborn said, you know, we've got to talk about my favourite client. And luckily, Andrea's here, because EMI is Claudia's favourite. And she, we got to evaluate just how good their relationships are and were with their artists and managers. That was quite a fun thing to do. And it's great for, for Claudia because her dad... Uh, used to be in the record industry, so she, as our music chick, was able to um, talk very knowledgeably about the whole music industry. I, on the other hand, have a really terrible taste in music. I don't really know very much about it. It was slightly embarrassing when I had to say to Tim Clark, who's Robbie Williams' manager, I'm really sorry, I don't know anything about music, but I'm quite good on how companies work together. Um, but anyway, I'd like to say thank you to Andrea for trying to improve my sense of music and help me a little bit of that. And Giles as well for taking me along to some capital things. So I'm getting a little bit better. Um, you get knocked by regularly by shareholders, press and customers. I thought that we probably ought to next year put a danger clause into the optimised contracts because we often find ourselves with really tear-filled um, both clients and agency people and other types of partnerships where they're a little bit beaten down. And last year we did have one incident when we had two very senior people about to punch each other. Um, I quickly decided to try and get them out of the room for a few minutes. 
didn't punch each other and actually by the end of the year it's one of our best relationships that we've seen really really budgeting. Um, here it says you need to continue and not be waylaid you can't be downhearted. Um, Angus and James Rennie had to go really sad this one really tough job had to go on a trip to Tenerife to run the briefing session for Jackpot Joy some of you also might have been at that they had to meet the winners um, and customers with the three pitching agencies and the marketing director I thought it was quite funny was was said to be overheard saying we can only uh, select an agency to work with us who can keep up with our drinking and our gambling habits so that's quite a good criteria to have on your list Almost there. We need fitness, resilience, and to have a lot of stamina. Some of you have already met Richard Robinson. Ah, oh, right in the middle here. Um, and uh, we asked him to come in and be quite challenging to us. We didn't quite expect the whirlwind that has come along, but we're very grateful. Um, and he is now very, very passionate by Optimize and coaching. And our coaching programs for craft across Europe have been a really big success. Um, with John Almond leading that. And we've had lots of planning directors, lots of your agencies have had the planning directors involved. We've had the head of the BBC Radio. We've had Jack from EMI, who's around somewhere, who's come and talked about Insight. Um, we've even had Kent and Cool, the um, mountaineer and photographer, coming to talk at some of those. Um, but we still wanted a bigger platform, and so we have just launched the Oyster Catchers Academy. Um, and we brought in Mickey Dennehy to do that with us. Um, we're just confirming plans for how that's going to roll out with three of our first clients um, for that in January. Finally, Ronan said, you need to continue and not be waylaid. You can't be downhearted. You need to have a vision and purpose. And that's probably the sentiment that we tell every client that comes to us for a pitch. Um, Peter's going to tell you a little bit about his favourite stories um, a little bit later on. Uh, another chief exec that I interviewed um, was the banker Benny Higgins. He's also from Tesco's bank, who quoted one of his favourite sayings, uh, Michelangelo said, the greatest danger for most of us is not that we aim too high and we miss it, but is that we aim too low and reach it. Of all the athletes in the summer, the leaders who have aimed high, um, they've certainly tried to do that. And we've really tried to do that with Oyster Catchers Club this year. Um, and it's also why we've decided to hold these awards this evening. Um, one for us, one of the magic of bringing clients and agencies together is, you know, the output. And there's lots of awards, aren't there, for creativity, for effectiveness. But there's really less, very little that celebrates just the amount of hard work that agencies put into this whole process. It is, it is kind of at the base of the industry. And it's something we grumble about sometimes but it is something that you all spend an awful lot of time on and you work with your clients on. So that was, that was the, the thinking behind why we had the awards. We had over 90 entries, so we were really delighted with that. Um, we've got a, a great bunch of clients who came along and, and were judges, and I'll introduce you to those in a minute. Um, but this evening, what we're going to do is to take you through five awards. The best agency RFI, the best agency website, the best agency credentials, the best case study film, the best agency film. Um, what we're going to have is each of the clients are going to talk a little bit about the category. They're going to tell you what was hard, why the shortlisted agencies were shortlisted, and then we're going to tell you who the winner is. If you're from the winning agency, if you can come down, if there's a film to play, we'll play the film and then you come up on the stage. We're going to give you our lovely award designed by Victoria. Wow. How cool is that? <laughs> Can we have a little bit more excitement, please? Um, and then you have a photograph taken. Um, so can we just, just show everyone the judges? Uh, a big thank you to all the judges, because it did take up quite a lot of time. Um, and actually, Karis was saying it was one of, it was one of the best. Yeah. Um, we had Karis from Ideal Standards, Simon from BT, Chris McLeod from TFL, Gary Hockey Morley from the Post Office, Giles Clayton Jones from McLaren, Nick Diamond from PG, Ash Taylor from Vodafone, and Carol Ball from uh, Boopa. So thank you all very much for that. We're going to have a little round of applause for our judges. Good. And we will start with the first one. So the first one is, I think, the most difficult thing that you do. Um, which is the RFI. 
And there's always a real sense of excitement at oyster catchers when the RFIs are about to come in. Uh, so we looked at lots of those, shared a little bit of the excitement that we experience. Um, and I'm going to just ask Karis Bright from Ideal Standard to come and talk about the shortlist. Thank you very much. Thanks. So Simon Giles and I, we were judging um, RFI. And we had a lot of excitement when we walked into the room because we thought we were going to spend a couple of hours watching films and uh, kicking back and having a cup of tea. And uh, then we found out we had RFI. And uh, so we uh, had to read and study uh, quite a lot. So it wasn't quite, I probably think, what we expected when we pitched up for the judging. But it actually created a lot of debate. And I think you found it pretty stimulating, I have to say. Uh, made me realise as a client I probably have been nowhere near demanding enough in what I should expect from people to produce for me in terms of an RFI because the quality of production uh, that we saw uh, was, a, was a pretty phenomenal. So really interesting. We had a lot of entries uh, for RFI. We had to spend a lot of time reading um, and going through. And we tried to put ourselves into the mind of the, of course, the audience of the clients, because clearly different clients are looking for different things at that stages. Some are probably wanting to be wowed by creativity and is this an agency I want to spend time with? Others are probably looking for, we know creativity, is this a serious, credible player that uh, procurement part of my organisation is going to be satisfied by? And so there are very different approaches to RFR and we try to put ourselves in the eye of the client and think about what they needed at that point in time and did the RFI respond appropriately? The criteria on which we were judging, clarity of message, creativity, design and presentation, and reader audience engagement. And I guess this kind of struck us that this essentially is what makes good communication. Uh, do you actually cut through and get your place around the table? Are you single-minded and clear in your message? Is it presented in a kind of creative an engaging way. Uh, and so it is, of course, the first point at which you have the opportunity to demonstrate to your audiences that you're going to be a fantastic communications partner. And I think mostly we saw some great uh, pieces of communication in RFI, with one or two exceptions. One we found very creative, but we couldn't read it very well. We found it a bit illegible. Um, and so we thought, this is quite interesting. If you're trying to communicate as a very credible communications partner, we couldn't actually read it. So we thought there was going to be some very interesting conversations about whether the size of the logo would be big enough or whether the print ads would be uh, clear enough. So, uh, but mostly, the quality was really, really very, very high and incredibly creative and huge amount of effort and money <laughs> and costs going into these. And I think probably a huge amount of fun also had by the agencies and putting them together because we saw some really, really fabulous things. We've shortlisted three, and I'm going to take you through that shortlist. And these were the criteria by which uh, we were judging that shortlist. And the first on that shortlist, oh, shortlist of three. <laughs> Iris, Sapient Nitro, and VCCP. And I'm going to take you through shortly a little bit about what we loved about these entries, uh, and then we'll... Uh, talk about our winner. So, first and foremost, uh, Iris. They actually entered in, in two. They entered two RFIs. Um, I think we awarded one of them to win. But actually, we were impressed by the way they approached RFI. Of course, they were clear in their message, reasonably creative design and production. I'd say was fit for purpose uh, in light of the pictures that they were producing an RFI for. The thing that we were really impressed by was how they really put a lot of thought into the category, the brand, the, the, the issue that the client was facing, even at an RFI stage. And so we looked at two RFIs, and both of those had a point of view about the category that was being expressed at that point, and some real creativity about how they were trying to demonstrate at that point that they had understood the category or thought about the category or presenting some points of view. And at that stage in the process, we were actually surprised at that level of attention that had gone into trying to demonstrate that they were interested, really interested in your business. Um, not only did they show that, but they also were thinking about not just the document itself, 
but leading to, to a microsite where you could explore, for example, some blogs about the category uh, or a really interesting interactive presentation. So we felt they did good job on creativity, presentation, good production, but the thing that they really surprised us with was the amount of thought they were putting into the category that the brief addressed and how even at that stage they were addressing some issues and a point of view. So we thought that was, a, that was pretty impressive, so they made it onto the shortlist, so well done, Iris. So just some examples here, but in a way this doesn't do justice to the, 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 the creativity that we found that they brought to life on um, the categories that they were, they were pitching for. And also a bit of personality. So I think this was Warner Brothers and they talked about themselves as kind of superheroes. And so it was quite interesting and fun to read. And so I guess you kind of thought this is probably a bunch of people that you might want to spend some time with, which at the end of the day is an important criteria. So some personality and a real interest and effort at the RFI stage into the client's business. Not just talking about themselves, but talking about the client's business and why they thought it would be interesting. Second on our shortlist is Sapient Nitro. Um, and this was an incredibly... Am I meant to be showing some stuff at this stage? Peter, you were meant to be my glamorous assistant, I thought, to uh, be demonstrating. It's going to be very obvious at some stage what the, the pitch was for. So I'll tell you now, this is for the Tesco's pitch. Obviously, the prize uh, is very big. Um, and this was an incredibly creative RFI that was presented to us. Um, <laughs> that came uh, in a Tesco's bag, clearly trying to demonstrate that they were much broader and a real credible partner for a retailer such as Tesco's than you might have thought from an agency that had came from their background. So extremely creative uh, with the packaging, whether it's hair color or washing powder or a bottle of wine. If you have a chance, have a look at these things because everyone thinks through and talks a bit about their, their credibility and their credentials in a level of communication. So imagine for that pitch, all of the RFIs you're getting and this lands on your desk. You're gonna take a look, you're gonna go into the bag, really, really creative. So some real kind of style. I just think what's interesting when you come out and look at it is, uh, you know, we do get people who do products and things. Every the detail. detail made a point. It was really, really smart. And then you've got the magazine. It was really clever. Yeah, yeah. So very, very, Incredibly creative, but not just style. There was also substance here. And this was the magazine, which essentially was the RFI document that they produced. It's obviously, it gives away the kind of client on the bottom here. Um, and in here, they talk a bit about why you should use and uh, why you should want to work with them and responding to all the questions that, that they were posed um, and dress up in this very creative way. So we thought this was an amazing balance of style and creativity and engagement backed up with some real substance. Um, because when you go through this, this really does address the issues that the client had. Uh, and we thought uh, on that basis alone, it was a really, really, a really, really a fantastic RFI. So well done, Sapient Nitro. We had a big debate about style over substance. Because you can imagine that sometimes, is this a bit of a gimmick you know, to kind of present the bag? When you actually looked at the quality of the things they put into the bag, plus the Tesco's magazine, we felt on balance there was enough substance to kind of match that kind of style. So really, really great. We loved that and we had a lot of enjoyment reading that. Of course, backed up by some uh, important information actually inside the magazine. The third on the shortlist was VCCP. This, is, this was big. It was really bold. And when you get into the content of it, it was actually quite beautiful. Um, so in terms of design and presentation uh, and creativity, this was a really, really beautiful piece of work. A personal letter, a, a personal letter to the client at the start, so really making this a very, very personal uh, and engaging uh, piece of information. But the, just the sheer quality of the design and presentation and also the creativity, and it was this mixture of quality and creativity, the style and substance that was uh, quite stunning here. So you can imagine receiving this, having this on your table, uh, wanting to look through, easy for a team to look, at, to look at, to kind of engage with, and some really, really interesting ways of talking about the same content that everybody has. Of course, people talk about why their brand onion, their brand pyramid, their way of looking at brand ideas is the same. Actually, having looked at these, everyone's got the same things. But this was presented in quite an interesting way. Um, 
talking about case studies, and of course they got great, great case study presented in a really, really engaging and quality way. And this actually was very impressive. Uh, this was for a very big client, a very big retail client that of course needed you to demonstrate that you could manage complexity and quantity of communication. And so they brought to life how they were doing this for one of their current clients, looking at a kind of a retail calendar and all of the calendar activity. <laughs> Uh, and so we found if you were wanting to be persuaded that an agency not only had creativity, but they actually could cope with complexity and detail and the sheer scale of work, which no doubt this client requires, uh, we felt they did this incredibly well. So big, bold, beautiful, uh, and we felt really matched that style and substance incredibly well. Which brings me, therefore, to the winner. And I think it's probably clear that for us, the winner was VCCP. Congratulations. We've got Adrian and Stephanie from VCCP to come down and receive their award. Well done. So it's the first time in my life I've ever been called big, bold and beautiful. So I brought somebody who is big, bold and beautiful. Um, I'm going to take full credit for this, actually, because I wrote the RFI, I designed the RFI, <laughs> hell, I even probably printed the RFI. Um, but those of you who know me know that's not true. Um, so pretty much, apart from the, the old contribution, contribution for myself, all of the credit should go to Stephanie, who's our marketing director, um, who put all this together in a fantastic way and does a, a, a level of quality in all our submissions that I think is, is second to none actually. So this actually should go to you, so brilliant. Um, and before you, any of you get any ideas, um, she is marrying, marrying our managing director in February and gets paid a lot more money than me, so don't nab her. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, I'm very thrilled about that. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Oh, to, sorry. So the second category, and then we're going to have a drink. Um, I think there's probably more arguments about websites than anything else. It's certainly one of our biggest issues, um, and I know that it probably is for you as well. Uh, but I wanted to um, introduce Simon Durant, who's from BT, um, Head of Marketing Communications for the BT Group, and he's going to come and talk through the shortlist. Thank you very much. <coughs> So, uh, having s done RFI, we then moved on to uh, a deep analysis of 12 separate websites. Uh, the next room we could hear the other team laughing at the agency films, uh, but Peter Carey stood there with a stick, um, in less, and uh, really was insistent. Uh, Giles f was fighting him valiantly, but... Uh, uh, getting nowhere. Uh, unless you think it's an incredibly sophisticated process, this uh, really involved four of us huddling over Peter's laptop, <laughs> trying to work out how the mouse worked, first of all, um, with, with little success. Uh, I guess the point with that is that it, it was quite a real test drive of websites. So rather than come, coming at it uh, trying to get a sense of just how clever it is and all the different gizmos and bits and bobs. We actually tried to approach it, I think as Karis was saying before, we tried to approach it with our, our client hats on. Like if we we're trying to actually make a judgment of an agency quite early on, on the basis of uh, our immediate impressions of the website, how would we find it? You know, as they say, you know, you, people make a judgment of you within seconds when you walk into the room. Uh, and the, you got this, you, in fact, it, it, go to, it went to show as we went through the websites that you make similar judgments about websites. So uh, it's no good having spectacular amounts of clever stuff in there if you can't find it or if it's very difficult to navigate around. And so uh, one of the primary um, uh, criteria that we uh, moved on to judge, could you move on? Oh, thanks. Was really the user experience. How did we find it as, uh, in, in terms of navigation? How could we find the information we wanted? How clear was it? How simple was it? Um, and creative, how creative was it, how engaging was it. Uh, what we found very quickly is that some of them were being very clever, but um, were in similar ways to the RFI, it's very difficult to read, for example. 
uh, you, you know you're in a bad place when the, the room collectively tries to grab at their reading glasses to, uh, to have, a, uh, have an idea of what, what, they're, what they're staring at. And so the main uh, uh, agencies which we found uh, on the shortlist, having been through them all, uh, gave a very clear message. Uh, it was very easy to navigate your way around. It's very easy to find out quickly what you wanted to know about them. Um, who they were, what they stood for, uh, and uh, what to do if you wanted to find out more information. And at the end of the day, the ones that really endured uh, and stood out were the ones where you went away feeling what they stood for and what kind of a company they are and what uh, kind of a partner they could be. So the shortlist, and we've got five on this shortlist, were in no particular order, DLKW Low, LBI, TMW, Leo Burnett, and Cake. Uh, the first one, uh, DLKY Low, was um, was really great. It was uh, instantly impactful. It was very clean. It was very easy to navigate around. Now, this one led with uh, case studies, and it used uh, very prominent case studies, but uh, as the basis of uh, showcasing the uh, the creative work, uh, and in fact, some very good creative work uh, there as well. It played very well. Uh, in fact, including the uh, Morrison's ad, which I personally think is very good, in spite of what the ASA may, may or may not think. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, as a result, very impressive. And you immediately got uh, a strong sense of what they stood for uh, and uh, the quality of the work and the thinking uh, that uh, they communicated. The second one was uh, LBI. Now, you'd expect LBI. We all said, well, you'd expect LBI to do a good website, wouldn't you? And, and they did. Uh, and congratulations, LBI, for uh, making Digital Agency of the Year in the Marketing Society Awards. Uh, that was fantastic. And again, it was a, a very good website. Uh, again, very clean, very easy to navigate around. Um, it very effectively communicated the depth of expertise uh, that uh, LVI had. Uh, and and in, in many ways more than most of the others, it gave a strong sense of their, their level of uh, expertise and knowledge uh, in the digital space and brought that to life. Uh, it, had, it threw a few unicorns in as well, uh, bizarrely, which is clearly part of, part of their, uh, part of their uh, uh, branding. And that really helped it to stand out and helped communicate that they're they don't just do all the different, uh, cover all the different categories, but they actually uh, are a creative and creative think thinking uh, agency. Uh, so that was, uh, again, very, imp very, uh, very impressive. The third one was, uh, oh yeah, now TMW, the first two led uh, with case studies and actually used the case studies, what we've done for clients, here's some great success stories as a way of, uh, of communicating uh, you know, why, why they're impressive. This one came out in a different way. This run really, uh, whilst having sh sh uh, case studies, really led with the, uh, their central philosophy, which they call in intelligent influence. But it was actually very well done. And uh, not least because everywhere, wherever you clicked in it, or wherever you went, it led to a, a very effective uh, little film, which was an elevator pitch of the MD, explaining in a trip in the elevator uh, exactly what this meant. And it was actually quick, simple, engaging, and you immediately got a very strong sense of uh, that they stood for something, what they stood for, and it was a very good launch pad into, uh, into uh, exploring the rest, of the rest of the website, including some very good case studies um, al along the way. So that was a very powerful, uh, very powerful website. Next, Leo, now Leo Burnett's was very uh, polished, uh, and uh, it, uh, came across immediately as very professional, very uh, slick and polished, very, uh, pro uh, very easy to navigate around, uh, immediately communicated a strong sense of what they stood for, and uh, again was very, especially for us huddled around a laptop, we found it a very uh, useful at getting uh, straight to the point, seeing what they stood for, the quality of the work they did, uh, without having to dig deep or search around particularly. So again, very uh, communicated, very professional image. And last, um, well, who doesn't like cake? And we certainly like this one. Um, it was, uh, had a lot of personality in it. Uh, it was very visual, very audible as well uh, at times. Um, really at the heart of this, they, they created some uh, really amazingly engaging uh, films which communicated what they stood for, some animated films. And that was very, 
very strong way, rather than lots of type you've got to read through, they really brought it to life and gave you a strong sense that they were dynamic uh, and interested in, in what they do and had a real passion for it. Uh, so that was uh, a very good uh, demonstration of uh, the company's approach. And yet we were left very, uh, very impressed with that. At the end of the day, when we um, uh, stood up from the stretch, and stood up from the laptop and really discussed okay, what really, we've viewed the short list, in fact, the long list, uh, what really, who really stood out for us? Um, who gave a real clear message about what they stood for? Um, who would we remember afterwards? And above all else, really, uh, who left us with a feeling for what kind of a company they are and the kind of company that would be a strong professional we'd want to work with? And the winner was Leo Burnett, for all those reasons. Um, following Suki's highlights, I've got um, three uh, extra highlights that I'd like to add. Um, as many of you will know, Oyster Catch has been going for five years. What you might not know is that in that five years, we've never repitched a piece of business that we've placed with an agency. So the future of our business is all about helping agency client relationships flourish and blossom. And, um, and, and that's a lovely thing. And I um, and just want to take you th through three things that sort of validate that, which um, might cause you some Christmas amusement. Um, and what we try and do is to make our pitch processes fun. Uh, we try to find ways of celebrating success. And we try to find ways of making sure that the relationship kicks off on the right foot. So I've got three short stories to tell, about a sentence each really, and a mere odd photo. And they involve a tank, a helicopter, a monkey, and a casino. Um, so the first up is um, Ellie and I uh, are attached. This is Ellie Tory from Honda, Honda Europe at that stage. And we travelled across 12 countries around Europe. And this was us in Poland. As we arrived, visited the agency um, to say, hello, we have arrived. Take Oyster Catchers, Honda, Ellie and PC very, very seriously. <laughs> Um, and Ellie, um, Ellie and I almost got married in the process. A number of people thought we were, in fact, married, and in my little dreams, so I probably was. Um, and, uh, but Ellie had to leave Honda, sadly, and, uh, and she's now, she's chosen a brighter life and um, has now joined one of our other, other clients, uh, Virgin Media, which is fantastic. And she's here today, and she's utterly gorgeous. And I had eight weeks traveling every day, which is brilliant. And we chose our own form of transport. Um, the second story um, revolves around a rather uh, another car client, um, a slightly more expensive model. Um, the new models would be nearly a million pounds for the vehicle. And um, this is at McLaren. And um, two highlights from that. Firstly, was the briefing, which was every boy's and some girl's absolute dream of going around the factory and seeing how that works and lifting the lid on the whole thing. It was like going to 
uh, see a surgery take place as opposed to there wasn't a drop of oil in it. Um, possibly the best briefing ever. Um, but more fun was what happened to the winning agency who we'd lined up a bit of a surprise, sort of um, apprentice style. Because outside we had a helicopter waiting. And the winning team were invited into the helicopter, whisked up away to the McLaren test track where we had six McLarens and their drivers waiting for them, expecting to be put in to the passenger seat. No, you're in the driving seat. And there they were on the test track. They went out, they'll have to take it out around the track. Had a fantastic time, and then we're taking the helicopter home. Congratulations, you've won a business. Brilliant, absolutely great. Um, and now, and now from my monkey, um, monkey. Also, this time we ran a pitch for Bet Victor, um, and this um, gaming, a gaming, biz, big successful uh, gaming business set up by the lovely Victor Chandler, larger than life as an individual, and um, we run our bedding in programs where we spend a couple of days with the agency and client team to make sure that they all fall in love but understand what the common objectives how they're going to work together etc all fits off into the right foot so in this case it involved um all night in the casino it uh, involved a massive dinner on the seafront and um and in the morning um we the our hotel room, rooms were raided which is a bit tricky a bit awkward not by the police but by some of these chaps. Because what the local monkeys have, have worked out in Gibraltar is that as soon as you go to the bathroom, they belt in through the window, steal the chocolate biscuits and all those little milky bits. And when you come out to chase them, they're going through them and they throw, they only take the chocolate bourbon biscuits and they're not interested in the cream, in the custard creams. And then they go out onto the balcony and they've got them all under their arm like this. And they're peeling them out and they're almost going, you, and you're sitting, sitting there. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous, but great fun. And that's some of the spirit and some of the fun that we try and get into the whole, whole of our game. So we've got three awards. The first is the best credentials. And I'm going to ask Gary Hockey Morley, who was marketing director at the post office and Sainsbury's Bank before that, and a keen cyclist and a friend of mine. Gary. Thank you very much. Well, follow that. Um, so I represent the, the three judges this evening, uh, Nick, Ash and myself. So for those people who were runners up, or didn't make the shortlist, please remember there were two other judges. <laughs> and for the winner, uh, you were absolutely my personal favourite. No <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, so the category, category was best agency credentials. So I had a little look at uh, what credentials meant, checking out a dictionary. Credentials. Letters of introduction, evidence of authority, evidence of status, and entitlement to privileges. The privileges perhaps in this context being the privilege of getting through to a shortlist in an agency selection process, or perhaps the privilege of getting to that first meeting with a client. So we were looking for the credentials to, to say very, very positive things about the organisation. We just got the output. It might be a book, it might have been a binder. But we looked at that output and wondered what kind of people, what kind of culture, what kind of vision, what kind of process, what kind of business priorities would produce a book like that. And obviously we're looking back to try and find the right organisation for us to deal with. Credentials also gives the, the reader or the client in this context, and we looked at the credentials as clients, gives us the confidence or belief that meeting the agency will be worthwhile, or ideally, that meeting that agency would be, would be exciting. And some of the credentials we saw definitely got, that, uh, definitely got that across. So to help us work out which were the right ones, we had some helpful selection criteria. Did it reflect the character of an agency? A big character is important, but you have to substantiate that with the material that's then presented. Uh, the clarity of the message. We only get so long to look at it. So you want to make sure that we get the important parts of the, of the message. I might know a little bit about the agency. I might know a bit about your work. But you probably want to help me get that into context. And you probably want to help fill in the details <coughs> that I really ought to know about you to supplement perhaps what I've read. So the clarity of the message is important. Memorability. We saw, I think, seven or eight. Even with that small number, actually, it was quite hard to remember with some of them who they represented and what they were about. Creativity, uh, to get the message across and to give you a sense of the depth of the organisation and its talent. And then finally, and most importantly, when you looked at it, did it give you a sense of an organisation, a group of people, a team that you wanted to meet, that you wanted to engage with? Uh, to borrow a phrase from uh, Suki earlier, 
that it provide inspiration for our curious minds. We reviewed the seven to eight. Uh, some, some were quite agency-centric, which when you're a client trying to work out how this agency can help my business go further, and there's not a lot in there about clients, that's not too great. Some were hard to read. Um, some weren't very, very legible. Uh, some were comprehensive, but really not that inspiring. Uh, and some talked about the importance of the work, but then didn't actually really showcase that work very effectively. So you're left wondering about the consistency and the integrity of the agency. But three really did stand out for us. Uh, so our short list was uh, Kamarama, Wyden and Kennedy, and Universal McCann. And we felt universally that the credentials for each of these agencies gave us a belief that this agency could take our business further and improve the performance of our business. So I'll briefly go through the three and try and out outline what appealed to, uh, to us. So starting with Kamarama, uh, we were struck by the strong <coughs> and distinctive visual identity which was carried all the way through. Uh, we were struck by the, uh, thank you, that's not, the clarity of the point of view. Uh, this was great material, hard working, great creative material that was for the benefit of the client, <coughs> not for winning awards. So we were struck by that. Uh, but importantly, the evidence behind what would make you believe that proposition was well laid out. Uh, so the credentials in terms of what the agency did and what they didn't do were very, very clear. And having established the preeminence of the work, uh, it was well presented in the, uh, in the credentials. Good emphasis on the work itself. Uh, and the template on the left-hand side, we felt was particularly uh, important uh, but useful. We can all of us perhaps see great creative work. What we were looking for as clients was a reassurance of the process, the values, <coughs> the people that could consistently produce great creative work. And finally, the team behind it, uh, well presented, uh, jam-packed with uh, important information that would give you confidence in this agency and the work that it could do. Second on our list was uh, Wyden and Kennedy. Uh, we were struck and enjoyed the, uh, to go to the next one, please, what we felt was a clean, engaging visual style. Actually, it was a delight to go through the, uh, the credentials. The credentials themselves were, were very comprehensive, perhaps the most comprehensive. Uh, talked about the, the vision of the agency, the types of people that worked in the agency, the processes that were used, the importance of insights. You definitely walked away thinking, these people think very carefully about how to produce uh, good work. Uh, and each of, the, um, each of those kind of illustrations was well illustrated with work that you would recognise. And then when it came to the creative work, again, great creative work that you recognise, but a lot of explanation as to the insights and the the merits of the, the, the kind of the creative platform used to get across uh, the point that the, uh, the agency and the, the company were trying to get across. And also a good emphasis on results, which is clients were always very concerned about, about results. So at the end, uh, we felt we kind of knew this agency, but were keen to find out more about the people that could take our business forward. And finally, Universal McCann. A really strong, bold start. Uh, so it's, it's not a boring book. It positions itself as welcome to a new kind of agency, which is quite a bold claim to start with, uh, but does echo the kind of curiosity works element of the logo on the top right-hand side. So you're there thinking, what does make this different then? And very simply, as you can see, it lays out what makes <coughs> this agency different from all the other ones that you might be, uh, you might be thinking about. Emphasises the importance of insights and their kind of ruthless, enthusiastic passion to identify those insights and work out how best to apply them in the work. So what you're left with is a sense of this is not a media buying agency. I think they word it themselves as we don't buy media, we buy results. The results are well presented uh, and the material which supports the credentials, again, very well presented. So um, what we felt was the most complete... But just this bit here. Oh, thank so you, just Peter. <coughs> which is smart in that um, as a media agency, what they've done is um, to get all the media owners to take space in this magazine, which they produce every so often, charge them for it, and make a profit out of it. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, fantastic. So three strong ones on our shortlist. We did feel there was one that was uh, particularly engaging, very memorable, uh, challenging, and challenged our perceptions of what uh, an agency in this field would do. So for us, the clear winner in the category uh, with a new kind of agency was Universal McCann. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Yeah. yeah. For, for a moment, I was wondering whether you. it was going to be, yeah, and by video link, smack. joins us or something. A media agency smashes them around. Certainly not. Good. Well done. Well done, mate. Very good. Very, very smart, Mr. Wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Come around here. Yeah. So Come around there. <coughs> Uh, next up, we have, so we're now into the film department, so um, easier viewing, and um, we have the best case study film. Now, we see buckets, millions of case study films that get mu much, much more complicated to tell an integrated story and to show the results of a squillion million Facebooky thingy, probably Twittery, Widdly, whatever, and it's just much, much harder to tell it. So... Um, this is really interesting, and I think you're going to like this. I'm going to introduce Carol Baubock, who um, is a new friend of ours, and she's about to start uh, in January, comes back from the Christmas break, as the head of global uh, brand and marketing at Booper. And then we're also going to follow with Chris McLeod, who um, you know from Transport for London, and he was a guest speaker at our last event. So, Carol and Chris. Well, Suki suggested that um, I add some comments on why film is important in a pitch. And for the life of me, I couldn't come up with anything of any gravitas to say to that. So I'll just say at some point during every pitch, clients turn into kittens. And if it's shiny and it moves, we'll follow it. <laughs> so the judging criteria that we used uh, for the best film is, did the work uh, reflect the campaign and the agency in a positive way? Was the message clear and simple? Was the story compelling? And ultimately, did the creativity and production actually add value, or did it appear that just someone was standing beside a really cool execution and not really embodying anything new and different in the film? Do we, uh, do we roll the film now? OK, sorry, the short list of contenders are uh, DLKW, Mediacom, LBI and TMW, and here's a short vignette of what they took us through. We had millions of case studies to look at. Microlone Foundation is a charity that lends money to some of the poorest women in Africa. And this year, we staged a unique live event. We created unfinished portraits of African women, made entirely of pennies, and put them on a digital poster site. Then we invited people to complete the pictures by texting a donation to the poster. Each donor also got a credit on our microsite, where all the portraits were displayed. From one poster, in one shopping centre, in its first weekend, 21 women who had nothing now have their own small businesses. You don't need me to tell you that kids love dirt. The squelchier, the oozier, the muckier, the better. Mediacom realised that kids are more likely to eat vegetables if they're directly involved in growing them through a gardening campaign. So they came up with a great idea. Papa's Big Tomato Challenge. Papa'sBigTomatoChallenge.com has had over 137,000 visitors so far, and most people stay for over three minutes. Sales are up by 8.9% on last year. My tomato plant produced tons of tomatoes. Bradley Simpson wanted to swap tomatoes, but I ate all mine myself, because tomatoes are not only delicious, they give you amazing superpowers.
case studies that I'm going to talk about uh, really embody the idea of a clear and compelling story in two very different ways. The first microloan already had a very simple execution. What they really were challenged with is how do you add value to a very simple execution by bringing it to life on film. The second case study of Del Mio was the polar opposite. We had a case study that involved above the line, a case study that involved an incredibly complex digital calendar, and then really in an old school manner, involved the distribution of seeds to the boy, through the Boy Scouts so that um, kids could grow their tomato plants. And so their case study really involved how do you present this simplistically? And how do you present it in a way that, you know, in less than three minutes, I can really understand the entire campaign and the added value that the film brought to it. Of all the things that we viewed, we really found this to be the greatest challenge amongst agencies, where was firstly, how do we capture anything simplistically? Because we have a digital calendar, and we can stand beside it and narrate it to you. And that's what a lot of agencies ended up doing. Um, alternately, how do you add value with film? You know, it's pretty easy when you've got a really cool and funky execution to, again, just let the, the ad run itself. And then we sat back and said, really, what did the agency bring to the party here by, you know, creating this film? and not just standing beside an ad during the pitch. So we, we wondered on a number of them exactly what they'd added and what they hoped to convey. So the first one, Microloan, which is DLKW's Pennies for, for Life, was how to make this cool and yet ext extremely si simple execution compelling. And we really felt that they did that by capturing the gratitude of giving live and on film. And in the longer footage, you really saw a lot of people who were actually texting the money and their reactions when their name was captured up on the board. And as those few pennies that they donated started to create this incredible picture, first of a woman's face and then ultimately of the business that she was going to, to um, embody over there and fund over the long term. We really thought that that added a lot of value because, you know, I, I came from my previous life in financial services at GE Capital. It's really hard to get the whole idea of money and lending to be the least bit gratifying and even a little bit cool and sexy. And yet this board and the, the people's reaction to this board really embodied that. And we really felt it added a lot of value. And we really felt capturing the live footage of people and, and um, the way that that obviously had a huge impact uh, was really important. The other thing is that their results were really impressive. I think they got captured in the vignette, but 21 women in one weekend were funded from one billboard. And I will say, as someone who's worked in a number of different companies, that really gives those companies and those positions which really have really small budgets a new lease on life, just a belief that there is something that can be done when you've only got one billboard in one location and a small amount of money to make it happen. So we thought that was really impressive. The second st case study that I'm going to present is Mediacom's Papa's Big Tomato Challenge <laughs> for Domeo, easy for me to say. <laughs> um, what we really responded to here was the creativity of the production. And I think you guys all laughed when the animated Boy Scout came up there. We did too. We also thought that here was a really tough campaign, a campaign that you know went all the way from uh, a really complex uh, digital media calendar to having to get seeds out to, to people, you know, seeds out to consumers. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to have to integrate. And here with this animated Boy Scout, we were able to see um, not only that it was creative, but also that it helped narrate the story, that we were able to follow the story from beginning to end and all the way through to the results. We liked the fact that it was a cl clearly articulated challenge. We didn't see that. You know, we don't know the, the, cust uh, the client situation in every single case study. So this case study said right off the top, Dalmio's tomatoes, but it's in a jar. And people don't think of it as part of their five a day. And we need to take a step back and not only convince mom or adults that tomatoes are part of your five a day, even if they're in a jar, but also to convince kids that tomatoes are cool to eat. And tomatoes are cooler to eat if you grow them yourself. And so that insight really drove the entire execution. And we really loved the fact that that was stated up front and followed through through every element of the campaign. So finally, um, I think that this really ended up in a really good place in terms of results. And you, know, you saw the results up there. But ultimately, um, it was really tough to see films that got beyond added Facebook fans, Twitter feeds. Um, you know, Twitter shares are that my personal favorite impressions. <laughs>
that completely fictional calculation. Um, so as a client, um, we know that you don't own 100% of sales results. And I'm, we also know if you talk to the head of sales, you owe, you owe none of the sales results. Mm -hmm. But the, the net of it is that take your share of it. Like really, if there's been sales uplift, clients are interested in knowing how it impacted the business. And as, as a marketing lead, it's so much easier to sell up the line if I can say this is an agency that can grow a business rather than this is an agency that can grow Facebook impressions. Um, so for Dolmio, 150,000 seeds were, were disseminated. Great. But the bottom line is that they played their role in driving 9% growth for the brand. And that was really the impressive part of that story. So I'm going to hand over to Chris to present the last two contenders for this category. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. I'm in that great position where I just say, I agree with everything she said, <laughs> all of those points. Um, and they, and they, they gave me film, because I'm like the old, the old, the old guy. And, I, and, it, and it said, film case studies. And it was like, you know, I did PowerPoint. You know, people, it's just incredible that everybody has like film case studies and stuff like that. So I think that one of the things I took out of all this is, I think Keris touched on it at the beginning, an amazing effort that agencies put into. I mean, the unbelievable quality of the of the of the whole range and how complicated new business is and, and the and the and the depth of, of, of work that people put in so you know just thank you it's, it is just amazing so there was two further um shortlisted um ads that we uh, or the films that we had europe car uh, and, and links um and it was our, our category was acronym city as well so the agencies either have odd names like trouser or fruit or JD7563, so, so Europe Car, which is LBI, and Lynx, which is TMW. Um, so Europe Car for, for, for LBI, um, they took quite a bore, it's actually quite a boring case study, quite a boring category, to be honest. Um, and there were some decent results in there, but Carol's touched on it. You know, the, the, the extent to which you just say, um, here's the stuff, it's great, and then you top and tail it. Um, versus trying to get some sort of personality into it and maybe something about the agency. So I think the Europe car uh, one did that. It was quite bold and it was quite, it was, um, it was quite brave for, for, that, for that sort of, the, the case study it was. Then Lynx, of course, very interesting, because we all know fantastic creative work, just sort of Lynx, there you go, stick Lynx up, top and tail it, and then you've won, haven't you? Uh, and it was quite interesting. There were more than one Lynx case studies and this was a quite a good one, and there was another one, which was pretty rubbish, actually, because um, it was just, you know, just throw everything at it and just say, hey, it's Lynx. Um, and there's that whole question about for these cases, I don't have the answer to this, these films, is whether, is there an agency style? So in other words, am I trying to give across what the agency's about, or is it a bit like creative work? The agency shouldn't come through, the proposition should come through, and therefore there is no... There is no house style. There is no style of the film. So then, how do you how do you get across any agency positioning through a through a case study? So the links one. I don't know if you got what was going on there. The in that edit, it was it's actually a bit cleverer than maybe the edit showed, which was <coughs> the April Fool was you could actually do the links by spray <laughs> using your iPhone, using your iPhone. my son would do this, you know, would, would <laughs> but he did. The, um, and that was the, you know, the, so that was the cleverness of the core idea, but the agency packaged, I think, around that quite, quite charmingly and, and, uh, and, and, and quite well, whereas actually some other link stuff just thought they'd just sort of get away with showing some link, links ads and, well, you know, how oh, great, great that is. So that was, that was the two additional ones that we, that we looked at as a, uh, as part of the shortlist. And I think there's this other thing about, so this whole category was new to me, film, film case study, is, so what's that going to add that having the account person in the room, you know, what does the film add? Carol touched on this. What's the added value of, you filmed all this, what are you, you going to do with this? What are you gonna, how is this better than just talking about the, uh, talking about the case? Uh, anyway, we have a winner, I think. And the winner is, I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> Where's the envelope and all that sort of stuff? <laughs> so the winner is LBI! <laughs>
So um, a, w a worthy winner there, I think. J just the right side of cheesy. Delivered, you know, some some good information in a in a, in a very detailed and, and informative way, and sort of gave a bit of a sense of what the what the agency was about. So that's why that that's why that won. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And our final category is for um, the best agency film. So that is an agency talking about themselves on film. And um, <coughs> I'm sorry, Jim Shoes, Nick Diamond, come up from the stage. Um, Nick is employed by Procter & Gamble. His title is Director of Tesco. Get it? Good. <laughs> and, uh, and here he is. Cheers, thanks. Fortunately, I'm not here to try and explain my title. Um, um, myself, uh, Gary and Ash had the best job. Uh, we had to choose the best agency film. So Simon earlier was referring to the group of guys who sounded like they were just laughing and not working. That was us. Um, <clears throat> it was great. Um, so we had the best agency film and what this award was all about was capturing um, the agency at its best. Um, on the surface, it looked pretty easy. Uh, we had to watch a bunch of videos and enjoy ourselves. Um, but I think as we went through and looked at them, I mean, I'll talk about the quality of the awards, but the, the, of the submissions, what really stood out is the consistent quality of the nominations. But what was actually quite difficult is to then tease out and separate out what was the creative work that went into um, developing the brand communication and parking that and really focusing on what was the unique idea and communication about the agency that was coming through on this film. So, you know, what we had to do was really park our preconceptions of the agencies, park our preconceptions of the people, and really focus on how does this deliver the DNA of the agency? And what we were really looking for was how does it reflect the character of the agency? Is it memorable? Is there a clear message? Does it have the right balance between message versus creativity? Uh, and it was clear that some of them were brilliantly creative, but in delivering the creativity, we actually lost some of the the, the clarity of the message. You watched it and you had a great two minute video, but it was actually hard to tease out a single red thread from that. So, you know, these were the overall um, criteria that we worked through. And I think it was um, all of the nominations delivered against some. There were actually few nominations that delivered against all of them. So really the, the best way to think about this was, you know, if this was gonna be an advert, if each film, if each two minute film was an ad, who did we most want to pick up the phone to? Which agency did we most want to pick up the phone to at the end of this? So many great nominations, but three agencies that really stood out. Um, and in no particular order, um, the shortlist that we compiled um, was BBH, Cake and Proximity. And we're going to show you a short film in a minute. But actually, I mean, all three of these nominations were outstanding. Um, and I'm going to come on to talk a little bit. I'll show you the film. A short vignette, about a minute from each agency, um, and then I'll comment a little bit more about each of the submissions.
motherfucking be like a tractor. I ride this motherfucking be like a train. True, true, go hard, go fast, oh. Pretty women and alcoholics. In 1998, three guys from very different backgrounds got together and asked, how about we do things differently? They knew that people no longer saw brands as icons, but saw the corporations behind them. They knew that the power of the media was shifting from the few to the many. Most important of all, they knew that people were bored. Bored of being sold at. Bored of being told how they should live their life. So they said, brands should entertain people. Do things that make them smile, or are actually of use in their lives. So how about we don't say a product is coming, we show it coming. Or instead of someone lending their name to a product, they put their name on a product. How about we listen to what people want? Because it's better to have a fan than a consumer. Because a fan, by definition, likes you. How about all that? At Proximity, we're part of the BPDO network, and the mantra for um, any agency in the BPDO network is the work, the work, the work. It's very simple, but it focuses you on that's what, what working in a BPDO agency is all about, creating great, compelling work. Mums don't need to have a relationship with P&G uh, about the products they sell. They can see those on the shelf of the supermarket. What they're looking to P&G for is help with managing their busy life and making their life a little bit easier. The results from this campaign were incredible. We got 50,000 tips added in the first two weeks. We got 20,000 to-do lists ticked off by mums across the UK. But the really impressive stat was 18 minutes dwell time on average, which actually is better than YouTube see. Uh, and you can imagine we had a pretty pleased client at the end of that campaign. Uh, we're a pretty competitive bunch, so I think that's probably um, a, a huge driving force for us, is to be the best. So, three great films, um, and these were just the short edits. Now, frankly, all of the nominations were great. That's why we enjoyed watching them several times over. If I just comment a little bit about the ones you just saw, I think BBH really stood out for the clarity of its message. I think it, the, the message of our London offices consistently winning new business and building the organization, I think was very strong. Good creative execution, really clear red thread running throughout, and a very confident, upbeat tone. Um, so we really like that. I think the cake, um, the cake film was just a brilliant issue set up and very creative. I think presenting a clear case for doing things differently and, you know, an issue set up followed by some of the execution that Cake have actually delivered was just a superb way of, a superb fun way of delivering that message and also told you a lot what it was going to be like to work with that agency. And then finally, proximity. Um, Proximity actually looking on the surface a little bit less creative than the others, um, a little bit more straightforward, but actually that gave it a lot more cut through in our opinion, very focused on understanding the client and the client brief, really rooted in delivering against that. And then it went, it had a really good build up in the rest of the film that really explained how they look to deliver against that brief in very creative ways. So actually had a lot of cut through. So three brilliant nominations, um, actually very, very difficult to tease between the three. Um, but there could only be one winner. Um, and so who did we most want to pick up the phone to um, at the end of watching that? And the winner is BBH. So we want to run the film. I'm a Usain Runnick, car does it in my own lane. Then I'm a
flash for the picture She'll come back now Hasta la vista, computer love I Mac to my finger, baby I'm a man, look you missed her I miss ya My lifestyle's terribly wild But you never catch me on the Jeremy Carl show Explosive, terrorist style Don't think I'm a blow, I get the therapy now Oh, I miss school and I haven't got a job yet My girl's pissed and my daughter's on the way I went clubbing till my world was revolving Pretty women and alcohol I ride small fucking beat like a tractor I ride small fucking beat like a train Choo choo, go hard, go faster Stack peas every day I'm living my life, cause that's what I do best The girls on my bank wanna show me interest Hey look, pounds or pennies, I don't scrounge off any I ain't fly, I am not an insect And I'm the life for the party Came with Ken, but I left with his Barbie Baby's with me, she can ride in the car seat If she's an angel, I'm Charlie, oh please My lifestyle's terribly wild But you never catch me on the Jeremy Carl show Explosive, terrorist style Don't think I'm a blow, I get the therapy now Oh, I miss school and I haven't got a job yet My girl's pissed and my daughter's on the way I went clubbing till my world was revolving Pretty women and alcohol Hello everyone, on this big screen It's massive It's motherfucking me like a train Choo choo, go hard, go faster Stack peas every day Never catch me on the Jeremy Carl show. Explosive, terrorist style. Don't think I'm a blow, I get the therapy now. Oh, I miss school and I haven't got a job yet. My girl's pissed and my daughter's on the way. I went clubbing till my world was revolving. Pretty women and alcohol. I ride small fucking beat like a tractor. I ride small fucking beat like a train. Choo choo, go hard, go faster. The best thing I've seen on TV recently, though, is the, the Yo Valley advert. I'm living my life, cause that's what I do best. The girls on my bank wanna show me interest. Hey, look, pounds or pennies, I don't scrounge off any. I ain't fly, I am not an insect. And I'm the life for the party. Came with Ken, but I left with his Barbie. Baby's with me, she can ride in the car seat. If she's an angel, I'm Charlie. Oh, please. My lifestyle's terribly wild, but you never catch me on the Jeremy. Like a tractor, I ride small fucking me like a train. Choo choo, go hard, go faster. Pretty women and alcohol. Come down, pets. Sorry, it's a bit long that film, wasn't it? Very good. Quick photograph here. I think one category we're going to add next year is great creative work, great pitch work that never ran, which would be a fun category, uh, because that, all that stuff that gets hidden in the drawers that, you know, for some reason, some daft reason never happened, would be really, really fun. Do you want to close, six? I'm going to close. Uh, I was talking to my daughter, Jasmine, who is 14, earlier on this week, and she said to me, Mum, did you think that you'd have a company like Oyster Catchers when you were 14? And I said, you know... No, because when I was 14, I was quite keen to be an actress. I 
definitely wanted to have a sailing school in Cornwall, quite liked to have a big house, wanted to have a nice snazzy jacket from Burberry. Um, <laughs> And I also really wanted to find that snogging boys wasn't disgusting. A lot of years later, I'm really pleased that we've got oyster catchers. And a number of you have said we've had a really phenomenal year. It's growing very fast and we're very, very excited. Didn't quite expect to have a business partner quite as eccentric as Peter. But, you know, you can just see how passionate he is about running his pitches. And it's no wonder that he's so brilliant at doing it. Um, and I said to Jasmine, the thing about snogging is the more you practice, the better you get. And I think for us next year, we're going to keep practicing. We haven't got everything right at the club yet. Like Peter said, we're going to do some more things next year. And we don't always get it right for everything that we do. But we're really determined to be the best we possibly can. And we hope that with you, we're going to have a really fantastic year. Have a lovely Christmas. Enjoy a drink with us now. And thank you very, very much for coming. Thanks.